Another popular YouTube, another day, another demo. And this one has me torn. So torn, okay? If it wasn't for the results, I don't know if I would have had this player higher. And this was a list that wasn't supposed to be based off results almost at all, except for the fact that with results comes deep runs. So you're playing in the high pressure matches in the one in the finals versus top teams, which means more games that matter more, you know, how it goes. But less goes to the eye test and more goes to the stats. And from the stats perspective, this player cleans up MVPs, um, just KD, everything looks really good. Insane that he was a rookie two years ago. Insane that he has improved to the point of being the best player on his team. Insane that he's one of the other two players to come out of his country that if they didn't come out, then that country wouldn't really be represented at all here. In the top 20 now, you know who it is. Should I say more? It's Brokey. Brokey is my fifth best player of 2022. He's a guy who I, I, I wouldn't say he was like, would be a lot lower or anything like that in terms of whatever, if it wasn't for the results and stats and all, all that stuff. But he is, I think, the exception for me and somebody who has really cleared in terms of the number as MVPs and everything like that. And um, no, no, no question, he's had unreal tournaments. He played an amazing Cato, and that's what we're going to watch. We're going to watch T side semifinal game at Cato versus Heroic, where he went like 16 kills on the T side. Talk a lot about the clutches that he got and uh, give Brokey his flowers because he's been sick. So, yeah. Gotta appreciate uh, what Brokey's brought to the table and the fact that he's like the youngest and best player on a team full of stars that he could easily be less good on and, and get all the excuses in the world. Well, there's something to be said about that. So um, I'm not sure FaZe exactly comes down to Brokey in the same way a lot of these other players, it comes down to them necessar some, some, somewhat necessarily, but absolutely without him, maybe they're not number one. That's the most I can say. So let's go. Let's hop in. Let's watch Brokey clean up on the T side of Inferno in a very important tournament for him this year. Katavice 2022. Let's hop into. Oh, what a good way to start. Katavice here for Brokey. Beginning of the year and the end of Heroic. You know, semifinals. I think Brokey destroyed at this event. So I figured it would be fitting to watch him play it, basically. Let me just go quickly looking over the stats here. 16 maps, first place, 1.30 rating across the event, plus 134 kill differential. Insane way to begin the year. And then the fact that he goes on to have be on the best team this year and be the best player on the best team this year. Well, fine. I didn't want to bring results too much into this uh, list. Results, in my opinion, only affect this list in the sense that you are you have deep runs and big finals and things like that where you're playing against top teams. That's why it matters. Not necessarily because you got there, but because of the teams you played when you Oh my what? Oh. Oh. Top five, baby. Um I didn't even know that was in this game. Okay. I just saw there was a couple of clutches here. I wanted to look at that because that has been a stat for Brokey. The fact that he wins a lot of his 1v2s. That's a big one. Wins a lot of his 1v2s. Wins a lot of his, his clutch rounds in general. Um, super smart, stealthy player. Goes under the radar. Huge with the, the fast shots. Great with uh, every gun, pretty much. I, I think Brokey is also just onboarded as a rookie in a way that not many people have. Bit has, Zaiwu has, but these are insane players to compare to, right? Brokey comes on to, to phase, uh, phase with Nico, uh, mind you. We know that Nico has done a lot of work with Monacy recently, and who knows how much he's learned from them, but uh, he played with BMAS at the same time, but Brokey was the one who survived, but not only survived again, he's the best player on phase. You know, he's the. He's the highest performer on... He's the highest earner on phase. Okay? He's a made man. Brokey. So, thing is, for me, I, I still don't feel like... I, I still don't... I feel like, you know... It's it's crazy to have phase be this dominant. Um, and then Brokey, I don't know where he'll be on HLTV's list. It's an interesting question. I wouldn't be surprised if he's higher than he is on mine. Of course, on this channel... 
we wait with bated breath for Brokey Week. That never came. Um, the reason is because I was enamored with the idea of doing Brokey Week. I watched some Brokey demos and I was like, man, I actually feel like I was expecting a bit more. And then I drew this comparison to Brokey and Shiro, who also has had an incredible year. Um, and then I, I kind of came to terms with the idea that, well, he's not an ultra aggressive opper that I thought he was before watching the demos, but he is still delivering on exactly what he should be. And just because I thought he was more aggressive doesn't mean that that, is a, that should be a downside for him, right? Like, we know Shiro isn't that aggressive, uh, but we're okay with it because we never thought he was. But when we when I looked at Brokey, I'm projecting here. When I looked at Brokey, and I was like, oh, he's so aggressive. And then I watched the demos, it's like, wait, is he actually taking that many duels? And then I look at the stats, and I'm like, this guy basically is Shiro, except he looks more flashy. And then I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? But... You know what? His style fits right into the current zeitgeist of how you should off in 2022. He is also very good in the clutches, which is perfect for players who are late round performers and players who favor self-preservation and have a low DPR stat. He has been wronged, I think, on HLTV, where the impact rating really just doesn't make sense for him. And I know the impact rating is super simple and like should work, but... This doesn't. You know Brokey has impact, and he just doesn't have impact as far as HLTV is confirmed. Um, concerned. Shout out to the podcast. So, uh, Brokey, yeah, he's got my mind bending in eight different ways, and I'm trying to figure out where exactly, you know, what he means to me as a player in the scene. But one thing's for sure. He, he has great stats, phase win, and he's the best stats performer on phase, and he... One thing's undeniable. Extremely good in the late round. So that, for me, is the biggest one. Such a strong closer. I, n I never never seen him make the worst move in a 1v1. He makes the better move consistently. So let's go ahead and watch the T-side of Inferno. Another cool part here on T-side Inferno, looking at the heat maps, he defaults everywhere. So we're going to see a little bit of banana. I think it's when it's faster banana plays where he'll be early on banana. Other than that, he's not going to be defaulting to banana per se uh, but starting outside of halls starting up mid starting uh turning alt and we're going to apartments he kind of does everything a little bit and i haven't looked closely at the rest of the phase players but i'm sure that's that that is probably the story for it's not the story for all of them i don't know yeah he, he seems like he goes to most places and just kind of plays support so obviously when you play op on this map and you're playing on t side you're kind of just holding your dick, right? And just waiting for something to happen because there's not much to watch. We saw him at the world final wall banging the top versus G2, I think it was. Wall banging car um, from T apartments with the op. That's how little you have to do with an op on T side of Inferno. So great to see Ro Brokey rifling for the time being. You definitely do not need an op on this map. And unless you pick the op up, if it's free, then go off, King. But if it's not free, and you didn't just pick it up, don't bother. It's a waste of money, man. The op is the single most important gun to have in a post plant on T side. Like right here, this is the single most OP position for an op to be in on T side. And then this one right here, or up here, or even here in some situations. Uh, I should draw that line that way. These are very strong spots, but getting to these spots almost has nothing to do with an op, if that makes sense, right? Your op is not going to net you entries into B site very often. It's not going to net you entries into A site. It's going to be even less often. So if you kill the opper who is holding this and blah, 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 he just dies, and you get the op and then you take it, or you, same thing, you know, op dies, he's playing Hobbit, you boost the half wall, you kill him here, you take his op and then you bring it to quad. This is the strongest place in the world for the op. It's one of the strongest places on any map for an op to be in. You have this line that goes all the way down to the back of CT spawn. You have an insanely powerful line into construction. You also have a relatively impenetrable. It is it is penetrable. You can op through it. Um, box that needs to be you either molly smoked or naded. Um, and then you have two sides that you can peek on. So not only do you have a very strong angle to con that you need to hold for the opera that's coming in, but then you can peek again back to CT and hold the banana choke point as well from all very strong angles. So absolutely important or pivotal that you have an op in that situation but again getting to that spot has almost nothing to do with an op which is kind of a big irony of opping on t-side important but irrelevant at the same time
but you see a lot of T side oppers running around throwing the support grenades, all the scaling flashes and smokes that they use to get onto the site. Oh, and there he goes, gets peaked by refresh. Back turn, unfortunate for him, but the split is still going pretty well. Oh, until JKS dies, and then. Oh, yeah, this is JKS Cato, by the way. Oh, interesting. So I think he buys it. Yeah, he, he, he buys it because they all died here. So let's see what the plan is for him on the op. Again, most of the time, you're not buying this op. I think I said don't buy this op ever. Obviously, you buy it once in a while, but on Inferno, you're going to buy it very little compared to other maps. All right, so, well, the entries come by via GK, JKS, who is actually a genius entry fragger all throughout Cato earlier this year. Won that tournament, won the world final at the end of the year. Starting on a win, ending on a win. Like every good matchmaking day. Okay. Um, and we're going to see what it means to have an op in the post plant, I guess. All right, now, there's actually no reason to go to your best spot because the round is pretty much over. Here he's opping the cross window flash right there. Very important window flash again. Always have that window flash ready if your banana players need it. Without the window flash, the teams would win an average of two rounds a match in professional play. Did you know that? It's a real stat. Couldn't actually um, test it in any reliable sense, but played through it in my mind. Pretty comp feeling pretty confident about it. No window flash, no win. Okay, that was close. Hold on a second. I just thought this round was dead because the amount of sitting around that happened. But okay, that's a quad molly right here. All right. Let's see. How can Brokey help right now? They have quad still alive, Brokey. Oh, look how annoying he's being. Okay, he gets in there. 10 seconds. Let him plant. Perfect. Oh, okay. Tessus was too fast. All right, never mind. I thought that was going to be a cool possible situation. Aiming for the jump spot. Doesn't see anything. Aiming for the walkout. Really tight, so no flashes can see him. Again, aiming for the jump up. Now aiming for the right side. Waiting for somebody they wanted to rock around. They could get to him. And Kadian gets an opening duel here. Ops on the other side of the map, so you can take speed a little bit on the other side of the map. Sometimes you don't think it's a double op. Maybe it's a bait. You never know. Okay, this is the God Flash. Everybody needs to go know the God Flash. No God Flash, no rounds. T is average a total of zero rounds without the God Flash on the B site. It's called the God Flash because it blinds all the most important spots and uh, can't be dodged, so... Unless preemptively someone was playing anti flash. Two to six, op back in hand. Op continuing to be in hand, exactly, actually. They favor getting this up twice. Here's that god flash again. Don't say I didn't tell you. See that? Okay, 30 seconds. Interesting round. They actually go back to Robs, who lurks sometimes towards Arch. They've done a good job with Ro uh, Robs. had a key round at Antwerp, I remember, where he lurked towards Arch at the, like, two seconds left on the round. Okay, huge shot here from Brokey, but playing with Robs perfectly. So that smoke comes down. You'd think odds are FaZe win this now easily. And that is, in fact, the case. Okay. Two to seven. Things could not be going better here for FaZe Clan. Oh. Really freestyled that one. Kerrigan's calling something faster. Ooh, and they run into the op. Moto smoke. Flash for all arch and actually the late flash is pretty good. It looks like it, it does work, but there's still an awkward smoke, a one-way under porch, plus the arch guy is still alive. And Brokey doesn't run into this, actually comes back. Let's see if this nets him anything. Well, you've gone this far. Do you want to take it to B? Maybe not. 
But if they wait long enough, maybe the CTs come back to B, right? They have zero vision. So yes, they pulled that one rotation. Oh, Opshot missed. Don't know how that missed. And the Opper went into Boiler. Interesting. Whoa, running through the... Wait a second. 15 seconds. Stown gets killed. Brokey has to run through, what, his own molly? Round could have been won earlier. Yeah, Brokey hit that shot. But now, it's still in the bag. And Brokey starts off with a 1v2. The first of a couple crushing blows here. 3v2 now. Really good spot here for Heroic. They win this. They steal it back all the way. But him and Rops, again, Rops on the lurks. All right, now it's a pure 1v2 and Brokey. He's going to try to go for the long con. So the smoke and CT, if you know they're playing retake, they have to respect that smoke. It's their only vision on the cross. So if you hopefully do that, then you can attract their attention for long enough that you can score a plant. Brokey's going to assume no one's in the pit here just so he can have some time. Maybe he clears mini, I'm not sure. Okay, and Refresh dies trying to adjust his spray. 1v1, now look at the move. You know that your opponent is coming over from the B site. They probably respected that one smoke you had. Look what Brokey does. He throws his nade and allows him to run a little bit to get a timing. And he goes for the wraparound. Now the bomb's planted for lane. So where's he about to be in a second? That's right, lane. So look at Brokey. And with the bomb not being tapped, he doesn't have to rush any farther. Tess is so confused. About to die in a 1v1 once again. And there he is coming right back into it just to go for the tap as he's done clearing out the site. Totally outplayed. Brokey wins that on land in front of all of his friends and family. And shows how good he is at clutching. And Kadian says, Fuller at Brokey uh, Marley League. And Kerrigan says, Ool. That's all accurate Danish translations. Some people say the support role doesn't exist. I think it's just because it's hard to reconcile how sometimes a role exists, sometimes he doesn't. And we do see that like Oppers on, on T-Side Inferno end up throwing a lot of the utility and playing back and looking for refrags compared to people in other roles. We're watching this demo um, because Brokey had by far and away the most amount of kills. So it just straight up had tons of impact even though he's playing this style on this map. But Brokey is a player I'm super torn about. I mean, it, but obviously it's just stellar numbers. Stellar numbers, stellar clutches, and... None of that can be touched. It's it's not like there's anything that you clearly see like this is what he just needs to be better at because phase are 100% operable. They don't they literally have won the most this year. Like what what do they what does he need to change? What does anyone on this team need to change in order to get better? Um, it feels like the games are won and lost based on how well they're called and then the individuals are all seem to be playing fun. Fine, excuse me. Which is a very cool place to be in as a top team. Oh. Brokey also... I, weird time to bring it up, but I think Brokey also has a really good movement. One of the best at making timings. Ooh, the double mini. So sweaty, so powerful. It's shower time if they win this round. It's not a clutch here, so I think Brokey... He either just runs through this and we see, or... Maybe he just dies. Oh, he made noise. Well, that's a rip. Fast smoke CT spawn. Even though you're exposed to the opera, sometimes you want to throw the fast smoke where you're actually exposed to CT. Something to consider. You can't always just throw the best smokes from safety. Okay. Especially not on Banana. No, not on Inferno. No more mollies here for emo. They saw the op get out of there. It's down, so... Oh. He died. Ooh. Brokey had any more time to plant. You know, who knows what would happen. Let's move into the last round. Okay, Brokey died early. Let's skedaddle. We're here to talk about Brokey, top five player of 2022. A guy who had amazing stats. He uh, is two years... His... What is it? Rookie... Freshman, sophomore? I, I don't know. I'm not from America, but I think it's sophomore year. 
either way, whatever. His third year, his third year, uh, or two years after being a rookie for FaZe, is now one of the best players in the world, straight up on the best team in the world, putting Lafayette on the map, uh, doing a ton. Crazy, good, amazing. Brokey, not Brokey week, but Brokey in top five. That's that's pretty insane. All right, so that's who I've got. Let me know who you have as number four.